Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Ryan Grantham? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case. I'll move to the timeline of the crime and offer my analysis. Ryan Grantham was born in British Columbia, Canada in 1998. He grew up in the town of Squamish, which is about an hour north of Vancouver. He was raised by his mother, Barbara Waite. According to the Crown, Ryan's father abandoned the family when Ryan was young. Ryan started working as an actor in 2007 when he was nine years old. He has been featured in a number of movies and television shows. He is best known for playing the character Rodney James in the 2010 movie Diary of a Wimpy Kid, and for appearing in one episode of the TV show Riverdale in 2019. Some sources refer to Ryan Grantham as well-known. This is a very generous interpretation of his acting career and popularity. He was not that well-known for non-murder activities, but technically he was an actor that any given member of the public could have recognized at some point. In early 2020, Ryan started having a number of mental health difficulties. He was a student at Simon Fraser University, but he stopped attending classes. Ryan had thoughts of homicide and of harming himself. On March 5, 2020, Ryan sat in his vehicle at Simon Fraser University. He had a shotgun with him, but he left the area without incident. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On March 31, 2020, 21-year-old Ryan was with his 64-year-old mother, Barbara, in a townhouse where they lived in Squamish, British Columbia. Ryan was having thoughts of killing his mother. He retrieved a 22 caliber rifle. He loaded and unloaded the weapon several times. At one point, he sat on the stairs of the townhouse for almost 15 minutes, trying to decide what he was going to do. Eventually, Ryan decided that murder was his best option. He approached his mother from behind as she was playing the piano. Ryan pointed the rifle at the back of her head and fired one time. Barbara did not survive. In the hours following the murder, Ryan recorded several videos. In one of the videos, he confesses to the murder and records his mother's dead body. He said, I shot her in the back of the head and the moments after, she would have known it was me. In a journal, Ryan wrote, there's a lot of media of me out there, hundreds of hours of me that can be viewed and dissected. No one will understand. It really does seem like Ryan was overstating his fame a little bit. I don't think that anybody was really paying attention to him, but for some reason he thought he was extremely popular. Ryan left the townhouse to get money, marijuana, and beer. After he returned home, he constructed Molotov cocktails and watched Netflix for two and a half hours before going to sleep. On the next day, April 1, Ryan covered his mother's body with a sheet. He positioned lit candles around her body and hung a rosary from the piano. Ryan loaded his vehicle with three firearms, ammunition, 12 Molotov cocktails, and camping supplies. He had a map with directions to Rideau Cottage in Ottawa. This is a 22-room Georgian revival home owned by the Canadian Crown, which was occupied by the Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau. Ryan had the intention of murdering the Prime Minister. Ryan drove to a remote area and tested a Molotov cocktail. After this, he continued his journey. Ryan stopped about two and a half hours into his drive in the town of Hope. At this point, Ryan considered conducting an attack at a number of possible locations, including Simon Fraser University or the Lionsgate Bridge, which is a bridge in Vancouver. Instead of continuing with the violence, Ryan drove himself to a police station in Vancouver. He approached a police officer who was sitting in a police vehicle and said, I killed my mother. Ryan was charged with first-degree murder. In March of 2022, he pleaded guilty to second-degree murder at a sentencing hearing in June, Ryan said, I cannot explain or justify my actions. 
I have no excuse. It hurts me to think about how badly I've wasted my life. He continued by saying, in the face of something so horrible, saying sorry seems so pointless. But from every fiber of my being, I am sorry. Even when given the opportunity to apologize, Ryan could not deviate from his selfishness. He still made it about himself. He was sorry that he wasted his life. In Canada, second-degree murder comes with a mandatory life sentence. But it's not really life in prison because Ryan is eligible for parole. The prosecution argued that Ryan should serve at least 17 years. His defense said that 12 years would be fair. The judge decided that Ryan would have to serve at least 14 years in prison before becoming eligible for parole. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. As I mentioned, according to the Crown, Ryan's father left when Ryan was young. This would certainly be a stressor for Ryan, but he was raised by his mother and seemed to have a normal life. She was described as attentive and caring. Ryan clearly had opportunities that most other young people do not have, like being featured in movies and on television shows. There doesn't appear to be a clear reason why Ryan had so many problems with his mood, like there was no mention of a traumatic event or anything like that. From the perspective of others, it's almost like his mood changed out of nowhere. Item number two, Ryan was assessed by mental health clinicians for his sentencing. According to the clinicians, not long before the murder, Ryan was depressed and anxious. His mood was described as unstable and fragile. He believed that he was a failure. Ryan was using excessive quantities of marijuana and spending a lot of time online. He was attracted to violent videos on the dark web. Ryan tried to maintain the appearance of feeling normal, but he was struggling. He stopped attending college classes and continued his marijuana use. The clinician said that Ryan was not psychotic, which is a little surprising given his actions. Item number three, what do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Ryan had a depressive episode, which contributed to him becoming homicidal. His use of marijuana also contributed to poor judgment. Ryan's primary objective was to kill a number of other people, perhaps because he wanted to get revenge on society. Maybe he wanted to make other people feel the pain that he was feeling. It sounds like he believed he was being judged by other people, like when they saw him in the movies and on television. Whatever his reasons were, in Ryan's mind, his mother was standing in the way. He was already worried about experiencing shame when his mother found out that he stopped going to college classes. If he committed a number of murders, his mother really would have been upset. The extreme action that Ryan desired was associated with an extreme level of shame. He desperately wanted to murder people, but he wanted to commit shame-free homicide. Ryan did not have anyone else in his life who he was worried about disappointing. There was no one else who represented a shame-based obstacle to his desires. Ryan knew that if he could kill his mother, he could unlock other homicidal abilities. Ryan rehearsed killing his mother several times. On at least one occasion, he crept up behind her and pointed the rifle at her head. On the day of the murder, Ryan was profoundly struggling with the decision to kill her. Eventually, he gave in to his homicidal desires. He wanted to escape the shame that was coming his way. He murdered his mother and continued on with his plan. Ryan carefully prepared for a larger-scale attack. He practiced with a Molotov cocktail. He continued to consume substances. He knew he was free to do whatever he wanted. Before he made it to his objective in Ottawa, Ontario, his shame returned. Murdering his mother did not give him the freedom that he expected. No amount of killing was going to release him from the shame. Ryan knew that he might as well turn himself in. At least he would have a chance of getting out of prison someday if he did that. He did not surrender because he was sorry about killing his mother, rather because he was interested in self-preservation. Moving to item number four. The murder of a mother by a child is called matricide. Let's take a look at the characteristics of a male matricidal offender. 
Over 90% of matricides perpetrated by a male occur in the family home. 70% of the perpetrators lived with the parents at the time of the offense. About 20% of the murders involve a firearm. Blunt instruments and knives are more commonly used. About 13% of the perpetrators were intoxicated at the time of committing the matricide. 75% of the murders occur without any warning. Male matricidal offenders have an average age of 31. The average age of the victim is 61. And over 70% of the offenders were psychotic at the time of the killing. Connecting back to the case of Ryan Grantham, he was supposedly not psychotic and he used a firearm. Other than these deviations, his characteristics fit pretty well with the typical male matricidal offender. Item number five, running under the theory that Ryan was not psychotic, and this was really a shame-based homicide, this case reveals the dangers of shame. When a person feels guilty, they feel as though what they did was bad. When a person feels shame, they feel that they are bad for engaging in the unacceptable activity. Both guilt and shame can be good, but shame specifically can lead to dangerous behaviors depending on how the person perceives their situation. Ryan could have contemplated his shame and determined that the reason he felt ashamed was because he was thinking about doing something wrong. Instead, he viewed his shame as an obstacle to his desires. Therefore, his mother became an obstacle as well. He was worried about experiencing shame based on her reaction. Ryan's shame was filtered through his own selfishness, arrogance, sadism, and callousness. This is an offender who is very dangerous, not someone who should be considered for release in 14 years. Ryan's defense tried to argue that his actions were altruistic, but there's nothing altruistic about murdering someone to eliminate shame in order to commit more murders. Ryan didn't kill his mother because she was suffering with a terminal illness or something like that. He killed her to allow himself to commit more murders without shame. This was all about Ryan. This wasn't about his mother. He was only thinking about himself. His behavior is consistent with vulnerable narcissism. Ryan was insecure, hypersensitive, pessimistic, and vindictive. This case exemplifies how vulnerable narcissism can be much more dangerous than grandiose narcissism. The vulnerable narcissist hides in plain sight. They look to strike out at people through an insidious mechanism. The shame builds inside of them until it reaches a point where it explodes. Ryan's mother did not have any warning of a serious problem. She may not have known that anything was wrong, much less that Ryan was homicidal. Ryan's narcissism was so profound that instead of seeking help for his depression, he wanted to bring other people pain. He wanted his relief to be delivered through his sadism. In the end, Ryan destroyed an ally and now has the opportunity to enjoy prison until he is at least about 35 years old. Over the next several years in prison, he will learn how to disguise his narcissism and will manipulate mental health professionals. He doesn't look like a typical offender, and that is going to be to his benefit. He's going to be looked at more favorably. After being released, he will once again have a chance to victimize innocent people and offer more evidence that narcissism is resistant to change. Those are my thoughts in the case of Ryan Grantham. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.